Hey everybody, today we are going to be continuing on with surface area, but we're going to be looking at composite objects. Now, because we're not going to be handing out the link cubes this year, we're going to be getting rid of this portion as well as this portion. And we're going to be going on, actually get rid of this as well. And we're going to be going on to looking at the surface area of composite objects. The first shapes that we're going to be looking at are rectangular prisms. In this question, Reddy uses three pieces of foam to make their ch uh, this chair. Each piece of foam is a right rectangular prism with the dimensions of 60 centimeters by 20 centimeters by 20 centimeters. What we have to do is determine the surface area of this chair. Now, in our luck, this is a fairly simple chair um, using three shapes that are the exact same dimension. So this is going to help us work through this problem faster because we only really need to calculate for the one specific shape and then use that three times. The big thing, though, that we're going to have to look at is because surface area is all of the visible um, area on the outside of the shapes anything for example here and here where there's an overlap in that face of the rectangular prism is not showing we have to make sure we're taking away from our total surface area because we don't want to add it if it is not part of the surface area so we have to take it away at the very end now if we go back a couple of pages and we look at what our surface area is for a rectangular prism, we're going to start out with calculating for one rectangular prism. And our formula for this rectangular prism is 2 multiplied by the width times the length plus the height times the length plus the height times the width. We could use this shape and look at the width being 60 and the length being 20. Now, notice how that's just the one. So from here to here is 20 by 20 and the height being 20 by 20. Or we could also use the measurements that they gave to us at the top of the page. So if I call this my length, if I call this my width, and I call this my height, we can stay consistent when we're using this formula. So the first thing that we need to do is fill in for the unknown values. Bring this two down, and we have our width, which is going to be 20, multiplied by our height, which is 60, plus our height, which is 20, multiplied by our length, which is 60, plus our height, which is 20, multiplied by our width, which is 20. Following the order of operations, we have to work within the brackets first, and we're going to look at the multiplication. So that 2 in the open bracket continues down, and we're going to have 20 multiplied by 60, which is 1,200, plus 20 multiplied by 60 is 1,200, plus 20 multiplied by 20, which is 400. Close that bracket. Bring the 2 down in the open bracket again, and we still are working with inside the bracket, and we have to add everything together. So we're going to have 2,800, because 1,200 plus 1,200 plus 400 gets us 2,800. And our last thing that we need to do, actually we don't need to bring that down anymore, is 2 multiplied by 2,800. So our surface area of one rectangular prism equals 5,600. And our unit is going to be centimeters squared. Now, this is for one of the rectangular prisms. And looking back at this picture, we have three rectangular prisms. So what I'm going to do is multiply this by three. So our surface area of three will equal 5,600 multiplied by three, which is 16,800. 
um, centimeters squared. Now this would be our total surface area if the shapes were not touching at all. But because we have an overlap here and an overlap here, it means the face from this here and the face from this here are covered up. So that one overlap is going to cause two faces not to be showing. So we have to remove that shape or that face twice as well as this one here and this one here. So we have two overlaps, but we have four faces that we need to subtract. The overlap of what the shape is gonna look like will be 60 by 20. Now we've already done this calculation before, but we'll redo the work just so that we have it in front of us. So 60 multiplied by 20 to find our surface area of 1 is going to be 1,200. Now we have two overlaps and each is two faces, so we're going to have a total of four faces that we have to remove for the surface area, so times it by four. So our overlap equals 4,800 centimeters squared. So the last thing that we need to look at here is taking our total surface area, so our total possible surface area, subtract our overlap to get our actual surface area. So we have surface area equals 16,800 subtract 4,800. So our surface area is going to equal 12,000 exactly, and it's going to be centimeters squared. Now, if you want to be nice and make it easy to find your answer, always box your answer for what your complete or final answer is. Looking at the next shape here, we have two rectangular prisms again, but they are of different sizes. So that means that this overlap is going to be the one that's affecting us. It's not going to be the total surface area of the top of this. It's going to be the total surface area of the bottom of this shape here. So this part here is where our overlap is. So that is what we're going to have to remove. And we have one overlap, which is going to be two faces. So we're going to have to remove that by two when we get to that calculation. But first, we're going to look at a different way of solving this. In the last one, we looked at calculating the total surface area by using the formula. In this one, we're going to look at calculating it, doing it by its faces. So if I call this 1 and this 2, I'm going to find the surface area of 1. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to have the top and the bottom which is going to be a rectangle, the left and the right. Now, in this situation, it's going to be a square. And the front and the back, which is, again, going to be a rectangle. Now, it doesn't matter if your diagrams that you quickly draw here are to scale. It's just there to assist you. So I'm not going to mark you on drawing it to scale. I just want you to lay it out so that you understand what you're working with. So if we look at the top and the bottom, I'm just going to get rid of this so it's not in our way. We want to know what this distance is, which is going to be 2, and this distance is which is going to be 1. So our top and bottom dimensions are 2 by 1. For left and right, we need to know this part here and this part here. So we have 1 by 1. And then for front and back, we have our bottom here and our height here, which is 2 by 1. So now we have the dimensions for our shape. We want to calculate this. So 1 times 2 equals 2 centimeters squared. And 
we have a front and a back in this one. So what we're going to be looking at is multiplying this by 2 to get our total, which will be 4 centimeters squared. For our left and our right, we have 1 multiplied by 1, which gets us 1 centimeters squared. And we have the left and right, so we have to multiply it by 2, which equals 2 centimeters squared. And the last one here, we have front and back, which is 1 multiplied by 2, which gets us 2 centimeters squared. And because it's the front and back, we times it by 2, which equals 4 centimeters squared. So that brings us to uh, completing the surface area for the first shape. And now we have to look at completing the surface area for the second shape, which is going to follow the same steps. So we want to find the surface area of 2. And we're going to do the top and the bottom, which is going to be a rectangle, because we're working with rectangular prisms. We're going to do the left and the right. And I'm going to draw that down. And we're going to do the front and the back. And that's going to be a rectangle as well. Next thing we need to do is go up to our shape and figure out what our dimensions are. So if we have our top, which is running along there, so 5, and our length here, which is going to be 3, so we have 5 by 3. Then we're doing left and right. Left, well, we need to know our bottom, which is 3. And our height, which is 2. And then last one, we have front and back. So we have our front, which is 5. And our height, which is 2. So 5 by 2. So now we have each dimensions for the different parts, the top and bottom, the left and right, the front and back. Now we have to calculate and then multiply by 2. So we have 5 times 3 equals 15 times 2 equals 30 centimeters squared. And then we have 2 times 3 equals 6 times 2 equals 12 centimeters squared. And then we have 2 times 5 equals 10 multiplied by 2 equals 20 centimeters squared. The last part that we need to look at calculating is our overlap. So if we go back up to the shape here, our overlap really is on the bottom of this figure here. So if figure one, we're looking at the bottom. If we figure out what the dimensions were for the bottom here, we can slide over. Our dimensions were one by two. So our overlap is going to be this shape here, which is 1 by 2 or 2 by 1, whichever way you prefer to say it. So we're going to calculate it by doing 2 times 1, which equals 2. And now there's one overlap, which is two different faces. So we're timesing it by 2 to get 4 centimeters squared. The last thing that we need to do is to get our total surface area. It's going to equal surface area of 1 plus surface area of 2, subtract our overlap. Now our surface area of 1 was 10 centimeters squared plus our surface area of uh, 2 was 62 centimeters squared. Subtract our overlap, which was 4 centimeters squared. 
So we have 10 plus 62, which gets you 72. Subtract 4 gets you 68 centimeters squared. Now, I did skip one step here. I forgot to show you that this was all added together at the bottom. So the total, or well, let's put surface area 2, SA2, equals 62. And the total here, we add them all together. SA1 was 10 centimeters squared. And that'll complete it for this second practice question. The next shape that we're looking at is an awkward one to work with. So what we want to do is we want to split this into two different shapes. So if we go across here and we drew a line right across, we'd break this shape up into two different. So we'd have a triangular prism and a rectangular prism. Now that's not the perfect line, but you get the idea of what it's supposed to look like. So we're going to have one shape up here and the second shape down here. The last thing though, before we can get going with our numbers, is we have to break up this 10 centimeters. So if you look over, the height on this part here to here is 4 centimeters, and from the bottom to the very top is 10 centimeters. So that means this bottom portion, get rid of this line here, is going to be 4 centimeters, and 10 subtract 4 leaves 6 centimeters for this part here. Now that we have our dimensions, we're able to work and calculate the surface area. So starting with surface area 1, we'll look at the triangular prism that's on top of this. Again, at the very end, we're going to have to get rid of our overlaps. But first, we're going to calculate the total surface area, and then we're going to calculate the overlap. So surface area 1, we're looking at a triangle first, and this is going to be your front and your back. Now the triangle, we have 6, and this is going to be 8, because it's the same as the bottom, so we have 6 by 8. The area of a triangle, our formula is area triangle equals base times height divided by 2. So we have a base of 8 and a height of 6 divided by 2. So our area for this triangle is going to be 24 and we have a front and a back so multiply it by 2 which gets us 48 centimeters squared. Next part we want to look at is the bottom. So we'll have the bottom of this triangle or triangular prism and the bottom is going to be 8 and then the width here is 3. So we have 8 by 3. Now there's only one bottom of this triangular prism. So we'll do the 3 times 8, which equals 24 centimeters squared. And we don't have to multiply it by 2. Then we can do our left. And we'll have a rectangle as well. And if we look at our left side, so it's going to be this outside right here, we have a height of 6, and it's going to have a width of 3. So we have 6 by 3. So 6 times 3 equals 18 centimeters squared. And there's only one left, so we don't have to multiply it by 2. Then we have a right, which is, again, a rectangle. Again, I'm not drawing this to scale. And 
this is our right side here. So we have 10, and this width here is going to be 3. So we have 10 by 3. 10 multiplied by 3 gives us 30 centimeters squared. The last thing that you need to do is add all this together to get the surface area or the total surface area of 1. So adding it all together, we get 120 centimeters squared. And that'll complete us for the triangular prism. The next part we're going to look at is the rectangular prism. So I'm just going to call this surface area 2. And we have, again, a front and a back, a left and a right, and a top and a bottom. We're going to have rectangles for all, so I'll just do a rough sketch. Now to do the front and the back, we have our front height, which is 4, and our base, which is 8. So we have 4 by 8. Then we have our left and our right, so our height is going to be 4, and our base is going to be 3, so 4 by 3. And then we're going to have our top and our bottom, so our, from here to here is going to be 8, and from here to here is going to be 3, so we have 8 by 3. Now we have this set up, we can do our calculations. Remember, because we have a top, uh, left and a right, a top and a bottom, a front and a back, our final answer for the surface area, we have to multiply by 2. So we're doing 4 times 8 equals 32, times 2 equals 64 centimeters squared. For the left and right, we have 4 times 3, equals 12 times 2 equals 24 and then we have 3 times 8 equals 24 times 2 equals 48 and we'd add all this together we get surface area of 2 equals 64 plus 24 plus 48 is 136 centimeters squared. So we have surface area 1, we have surface area 2, and the last thing that we need to do is subtract our overlap. Well, our overlap is going to be this part here. This is where our overlap is going to be. So our dimensions are going to be the top of our rectangular prism. Now the top and bottom of a rectangular prism was 3 by 8. So if I go to our overlap equals 3, oh, let's draw it out, 8 by 3. So we have 8 times 3 which equals 24. And there's one overlap, which means two faces, so we have to times it by 2 to get our answer of 48 centimeters squared. The last thing that we do to get our total surface area equals SA1 plus SA2 subtract or overlap which equals surface area of 1, which was 120, plus surface area of 2 is 136, subtract our overlap of 48, gets us a SA of 208 centimeters squared. And that'll be our final answer.
The last one we're going to look at here is two cylinders. Now, two cylinders have diameters of 14 centimeters and 26 centimeters and are 5 centimeters tall. So both cylinders are 5 centimeters tall. The only difference here is that the diameters are different. They are arranged as shown. What is the surface area of this composite shape? So what we want to first calculate is the surface area of one of the cylinders. If we call this 1 and this 2, we can keep track of which one we're multiplying. So surface area of 1 is going to equal, for a cylinder, 2 pi r squared plus 2 pi r h, which is radius times your height. Now, in this diagram, they give us a diameter of 14. So 14 divided by 2 equals 7 centimeters, which will be our radius. And for 26, because we're going to have to do this later, 26 divided by 2 gives us a diameter, or sorry, a radius of 13 centimeters. Now we have the numbers that we can actually work with. So we have 2 multiplied by pi multiplied by our 7 squared plus 2 multiplied by pi multiplied by 7 multiplied by our height, which is 5. And we can do these pieces. I would do the first portion before the plus and then the second portion after the plus. So it's going to equal 2 times pi times 7 squared is 307.9 plus 2 times pi times your radius times your height is 219.5. So the uh, surface area of 1 is going to be 307.9 plus 219.5 which is 527.9 centimeters squared. Then we have to do surface area of the second cylinder, which again is the same formula. So we have 2 times pi times our radius squared plus 2 times pi times your radius times your height. We can fill these in now for the unknown. So 2 times pi is the same. Our radius, though, this time is 13 squared plus 2 times pi times 13 times our height of 5. Solving for the first portion before the addition is 2 times pi times 13 squared. And then, uh, well, actually, let's just do this as a whole. So, and then you do 2 times pi times 13 times 5, and you'll get 1,470.3 centimeters squared. Now, our last thing that we need to look at is our overlap. Our overlap really is occurring on the bottom of this circle here. So, all of this is the circle that is covering up on both sides. So don't add the top of the cylinder for uh, number two. We're trying to subtract the bottom of the cylinder of number one. Now, we have a circle that is going to have a radius of seven, which means we need to do pi r squared for this. So pi r squared is going to be pi times our radius of 7 squared. So our overlap equals three hundred or sorry a hundred and fifty three point nine centimeters squared. Now we have one overlap. That means we have to multiply this by 2, which will give us an overlap of 
eight centimeters squared. The last thing that we need to do is the surface area of the total equals SA1 subtract SA2, or sorry, SA1 plus SA2 subtract our overlap. So SA1 is 527.8 plus surface area of 2 is 1,470.3, subtract 307.8, which will get you a final answer of 1,690.3 centimeters squared. Now this will bring us to the end of this lesson. So we looked at calculating the surface area for multiple um, shapes, so looking at cylinders, triangular prisms, and rectangular prisms, all following the formulas that we've used below uh, before, but the thing is we're just now having to subtract or overlap. Remember, for every overlap, that's two faces, so you always have to double your overlap. Other than that, that's going to be it for today's lesson. If you have any questions, please make sure you ask me in class, or you can send me a message over Teams. Have a good day.